you got a booty and you can pay the bills with it, if you're a hot girl and you can pay the bills with it, by all means. Better miss me with that bullshit. Better miss me with that bullshit. What's up guys, Lexa here. Uh, let me turn this down because I'm watching Star Trek and you might be able to hear it in the background. There's some sad news and I know this has already been passed but by the time I had a chance to make a video about this, you know, it already happened. And, uh, it was that Hugh Hefner passed away. I didn't expect Hugh Hefner to pass away when he did, like this year. I knew he would, I knew he was old but you know, you just never really plan on that happening anytime soon. In fact, I thought he would live forever, but it's, it was really sad. But it's also heartwarming to know that he lived a long life, he did a lot of great things, and he lived a very fulfilling life full of beautiful women. Um, what I wanted to say, and I've been wanting to make a video about this for a long time, but I think maybe with this I can tie it in because um, without Hugh Hefner, actually, I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't have the job that I have. And some of you may know this, not all of you do, but uh, I, when I was really young, I was old enough, don't freak out, uh, I was old enough, but I went to California and I went to this event, this audition. Uh, there, certain girls were chosen to go out to California to the Playboy Mansion and do a test shoot um, there with some of their photographers, hang out, have this little party, do all these fun things for Playboy TV, do some interviews. It was really cool. It was very fun. And we all got to meet Hugh Hefner, which was really, really cool. He just came out and he was in his red little robe and he waved high and he had this really, really sweet, genuine smile. Very good looking guy very humble, kind, kind-hearted, sweet, genuine, just very loving, just, I don't know, he's one of the, I think he's just one of the most humble people, you know, especially for being surrounded by all the, like, hot chicks that he is, he's just, he genuinely just wants to take care of them, and I, in fact, don't think that he is at all, he's not, he's not a perv, he's just, he's just a good guy. Um, so yeah, I went out there, and my, my dad went out to California with me, because I was just too young to really, I couldn't run a car, so uh, he drove me into Beverly Hills, up to the Playboy gate, and my dad was like, damn, can I come in with you? Like, that would be so cool. He couldn't, they only let me in, but it was, it was awesome. I, I'm like sitting there having a conversation with this one chick, and I like hear something, and I turn around, and no shit. There's this peacock on the lawn that's just like strutting. His feathers are all like, I think he was trying to like mate with one of these girls or something, but he was like just strutting across the lawn. And I knew there was a zoo, like, cause I could hear little monkeys. This place was lit. Like they literally had a zoo, it was behind everything. So I really couldn't see it, but I could hear the animals and I could see some of the birds. But this peacock fucking comes out of nowhere and it's just strutting across the lawn. It was so cool, but I really didn't know what this this all was for. I thought maybe it was for, you know, a Playboy uh, magazine or Playboy TV, Playboy radio. I don't know. But I saw these signs there, and what they were doing was they were, I guess, starting a new venture. And this new venture was called Playboy Live. And it sort of was like an interactive chat room, kind of like you now, but with hot girls. So... Initially, they were, you know, offering to pay $20 an hour. You work from home, you create your own hours, you're your own boss. And at the time I was working at Hot Topic, I had a great, great, great time at Hot Topic, but my music was sort of starting to kick off and, like, become a main um, focal point in my life, and I wanted to focus on that. I wanted more money to do that. I wanted more freedom and time to do that. So I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm going to take this job. So... I eventually did. I kind of took my time with it. And oh, eventually, you know, like with 
the internet, you know, becoming what it is and things progressing, I eventually merged over to the other company that was their like brother company and I work with them instead so that I get more of a cut of my money. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't have the freedoms that I do and the ability to do all that I do if I didn't have this job. Now, what I wanted to make a video about before was, and pardon me, my voice is kind of like, I don't know, I sound like blah, because I'm just sick and still trying to recover from craziness. But what I wanted to initially make a video about was that I... Uh... <clears throat> And that's it, pretty much, uh, that was the point I wanted to make. Video's over, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, the point I wanted to make was that I, I am a cam girl. That, that's what I do. If not, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of you know what a cam girl is. It's not like something that I publicly announce. Because I'm known, I, I'm known and would like to be known for being a hip-hop artist, for being myself. For being a, a businesswoman, for being an intelligent, creative person, I don't, you know, that that's not who I am. It's something that I do. It's something that is a crutch to provide the ability to do these other things as well. But yeah, I, I, I'm a cam girl, and I just I feel like there's a stigma around girls that that are cam girls, girls that do naked photo shoots, uh, that are strippers sex workers in general, whatever, um, there's a huge stigma around them. I've met a lot of women that do that, and they are normal people. They are just like everybody else, and I don't think it makes them any different of a person than anybody else that had any other job, and the reason that is is because really they're not skeevy, sexual, slutty people. That's really not who, are the, who they are. That's just the line of work that they so happen to have gotten into that maybe pays well, that maybe fits their life and their situation. Maybe they fell into it, you know, like I didn't find the job, the job kind of found me, you know, I didn't really know what I was getting into. But I had done a lot of nude modeling, pin-up modeling, all sorts of stuff like that, and I was cool with it, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I feel like a lot of, a, a lot of the guys that I've told have thought it was really have thought it was really cool. They never judged me. Um, in fact, a lot of them were like, hey, can I get on there with you? And I'm like, no, this is a solo thing. I don't I don't really think I would ever involve anybody or get, in, get anybody involved in that world because I feel like a lot of the time guys feel, guys think that it's, you know, really cool. The idea of it is cool, but in all actuality, it's really, it's business. And I'm not somebody that, you know, I'm not a sexual deviant. I don't get off to this. This doesn't tickle my fucking fancy. This to me is work. And I may, I may make it seem like it isn't. I may do a really good job of making it seem like I enjoy it. But to me, this is my line of work and I am a professional. Sure, I enjoy the people that I talk to. Um, and... I like it, you know, it's it's awesome. I'm not I'm not saying that I don't that it's that it's fake, but I'm saying that I am more to it than that. I am not a slut because of what I do. That's what I'm saying. I don't think any girl that does what she does should be considered a slut or have any ulterior idea of them because of what they do. I don't think anybody really has. I have many, many friends many successful friends and all of them support what I do. They think it's cool. They're proud of me when I make a lot of money. The only reason that I sort of wanted to make this video is because it's a little bit different when you're in a relationship with somebody. They might think it's all cool at first. They might wish you didn't do that or you didn't have to do that or they might get jealous. The thing is is they think it's cool at first until they're around it. When you're around it and you're living with somebody, I feel like they don't understand. Like, say for instance, if I were dating somebody and they did what I did and I heard them, you know, talking to people online and stuff like that, I might get a little jealous. But I think maybe there needs to be a discussion that, listen, like, this is, this is what I do. This is what I've been doing. It's not something you, you can't take it seriously or to heart. It's completely separate, really, from 
my essence. That needs to be, a, that, that should be a conversation because people will lump you in into some category. Um, but I think honestly, this job is awesome. I make as much, if not more, in two or three hours than somebody does all day. I can work whenever I want. I choose my own hours. A lot of the time, see, because I do what I do, you know, I'm a night owl. I usually work like, you know, late night, middle of the night. So I kind of live a little bit of an opposite schedule from the rest of the world. Not really though, because I a lot of people I know are night owls and late nighters and everything like that and you know, DJs and people that host parties, bartenders, you know, even just music friends and stuff like that. I don't know, I just think it's really nice. I feel like, you know, I don't want to spend my you know, eight hours a day doing something I don't really want to do and being anxious or depressed because I feel like I wasted my life or my potential where I could have been doing something else, whether it's going to an event, practicing this, honing this, getting an extra hour of sleep. You know, like I just don't, I don't feel like us as human beings were intended to living the life or living the way that we're living now. And that's sort of like in this hamster wheel of seven to five, seven to six bullshit that we really don't want to do so we can pay taxes till we die. I don't really feel that that's the way that humans were intended to live. Now more than ever, we live in this amazing time where there's a lot of people that have their own business, their own DIY thing going on, and they create their own hours. They have their own independent source of income. They're doing different things that allow you to sort of create your own network and your own freedom. Even driving for Uber, um, I think that's awesome. I think that's amazing, you know. Um, I give credit to people that are like vocal teachers and teach people over Skype and create their own hours or people that have their own online shop or artists and contractors and painters and people that build things. I think now that more than ever age doesn't matter and you can continue to do what you love on your own accord for the rest of your life. You know, now more than ever, it's an amazing time to do what you love. And I think that that's the whole point of me making this video to sort of describe to you a little bit more about what, why I do it. And maybe a little message to all the guys that I've dated that maybe they got it or they didn't get it. I feel like, okay, so my first boyfriend, um, God bless him was very supportive of it, actually. In fact, he wore my shirt around that said, I posed today, and it had a Playboy bunny on it. I thought that was really funny. I'm pretty sure he still has that. I'm not sure. But he would come into my chat room and tip. And I think that's awesome, okay? There's a lot of guys I, I'm sure I know that come into my chat room and lurk, but if you're my boyfriend and you're dating me, you come into my chat room and you're like, come on guys, support this girl, and you tip me, that's fucking, Standing ovation, standing ovation. Anyways, um, but the second person that uh, that I dated, they didn't like it as much. Um, like they they got it, they understood. I didn't live with them at first, and then when I started to live with them, I don't. I think they didn't like it even more. And I kind of like blamed myself a little bit, and I thought, well, hmm. Maybe, maybe I'm a horrible person for doing this or whatever, but I know I'm not a horrible person. You know what I mean? Like I, that's, that's just fucking malarkey. Um, so I think maybe, I mean, maybe it's different when you live with somebody or you're around it, but most of the people in my life that, uh, they think it's really cool. They don't, they support it like a hundred percent. I, maybe it's because, you know, they don't live with me. I really don't think that that's entirely it. Um, I think there might be like an element of jealousy or insecurity and I always thought, well, if somebody's jealous or they don't want me talking to other men, that means that they care about me. That's really not always the case either. Um, regardless, I just wanted to tell you the story about me meeting Hugh Hefner, my experience with Playboy and all that is Playboy, my job, what I do, and um, why I think it's cool and it's nothing to be ashamed about.
So if you out there or somebody that does this too, go you. If you got a booty and you can pay the bills with it, if you're a hot girl and you can pay the bills with it, by all means. Anyways, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, any cam girls out there, leave some comments below. Let me know how it is for you. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you guys. Lexa out. Bye. Bye.